Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. I'm very pleased to have a new guest on today who I just met recently through a friend of mine who has used his services and had incredible results with cold laser therapy. So I just want to introduce you to Dr. David Shiflett. Thank you so much for being here today. Very happy to have you here. I know you have wide variety of skills. You're the owner of the Chiropractic Health Innovations. And you have done a lot in the Arizona Phoenix Valley. So I want you to share with us a little bit, but thank you again for being here. Uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. um, just a little about myself. I'm sure. actually an Arizona native. Oh, that's rare. So I've lived here all of my 60 plus years. So <laughs> <laughs> I have practiced um, as a chiropractor for the last almost 38 years right now. Um, as far as cold laser therapy is concerned, I started using lasers oh, probably 22 years ago, 23 okay. years ago. Yeah. And I was using them in my practice before the first laser company had a 510K from the FDA. Wow. Um, I actually purchased one for personal use because of some a back injury I had. Um, it's the only thing I found that gave me a lot of relief. And so I started, I bought one for myself, started integrating it into my practice. Mm -hmm. And the laser company happened to move their entire operation to Mesa from Colorado. And so they were just up the street from me and they needed lots of warm bodies to do their study for the FDA. And I had lots of warm bodies. And so <laughs> I actually helped them do their, their original study on you know, neck and shoulder pain to get their okay. pipe tape from the FDA. Oh, that's wonderful. Wow. I was involved when they were first getting going. Um, a lot of the research involved, I had the chance to sit in meetings with um, their chiropractic neurologists that were doing the study for them and, mm -hmm. and just be really involved in the research aspect of the laser. And then I had the opportunity to teach for them for about five years. So I traveled all over the United States and Canada teaching. Um, the lasers we use in the clinic are made, um, the company is called Arconia. Okay. Um, they're, they're the first one to get a 510K from the FDA. Everybody else kind of did a substantial equivalent based on theirs. Mm -hmm. um, but, and then we have developed a, like a personal handheld laser for patients now. Okay. It's not through Arconia, but um, that we, I, I have made directly. It was designed by their electrical engineer and, and it's more user-friendly than the big clinical models. So anyway. Okay. And that's how in that. Wow. And is this only cold laser therapy or is it all different types of lasers that um, you were researching? Mainly everything that I use in the office is in that cold range. And okay. that means when we say cold laser, it's just not reaching a point where it's stimulating any heat from the laser at all. Okay. Okay. So all the lasers are in the visual spectrum that you mm -hmm. can see. Um, the ones we use most often in the clinic are in that 635 range. Okay. So the laser itself is red in color when you look at it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people assume that's an LED that gives you that, that red color, and it's not. That's the actual laser okay. light spectrum that you're looking at. Okay. Um, the reason we use a 635 laser, mm -hmm. um, years ago, the Russians did research. And when a cell goes through mitosis, mm -hmm. at the moment it splits in half, there's actually a visual light that is let off when the cell splits. Oh, wow. Happens to be 634 nanometers. Okay. Okay, and so we're using a 635 laser. And so we're getting the tissue to resonate like it was resonating when it was brand new. Okay. Okay, and that's, that's part of the point. Get the profound results we have. Okay. Um, what makes a laser a laser and not an LED um, is what they call light coherence. Okay. okay. The big word. Yes, let's go through that. 
But what that means is that all the light is traveling the same wavelength at the same time. Okay. So the diodes we use in the lasers are mm -hmm. 635 plus or minus one. Okay, right. so it's a real tight spectrum that I want to hold exactly. And the closer I can get it to hold to a 635, the more penetration you get with the laser and the more introduction you get at the cellular level of the laser. Okay. Like an LED you might buy at the store. Yeah. To be in that 630 spectrum if it's red, okay. plus or minus 40 or plus or minus 50. Got so it. the ability to penetrate through the stay in the tissue the way that a diode that's holding that tight wavelength okay so it's definitely not as specific so you have more control with a laser correct and okay. the lasers we use um, have the ability to pulse that wavelength so the wavelength always stays exactly the same but i can pulse the wavelength okay um, the reason that's important in your ability to do that is different tissues have different resonant frequencies or different pulse widths. Mm -hmm. So your muscles are different than your nerves, different than bones, different than your thyroid, different than your pituitary. And so I'm able to specify which tissue I want to stimulate with the laser by pulsing that wavelength. That makes sense. Got it. Me. It does. So you're keeping the wavelength the same, but the amount of seconds it's on or how many times per second that you're emitting the laser changes based on the tissue right and is it does it have anything to do with the density of the tissue or is it just the different no. cell makeup of the tissue the different cell makeup and the frequencies we normally use mm -hmm. um, the pulse the laser are all based on research that was way back in the 40s and 50s wow. um dr royal rife i don't know if you've heard of dr rife uh, yes. These are the right frequencies. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how I'm pulsing that wavelength. Yeah. It is based on his research and which tissue has which, <laughs> which okay. frequency to it. Wonderful. And then does it also matter based on that tissue, the length of time that you're doing the pulsation to? You know, we, Arconia did some studies when they were first doing this. And they get full penetration through the body because of that light coherence. Okay. Um, the particular study they did was doing the MRI on the abdomen, mm -hmm. showing that it penetrated through all the layers completely at about three and a half minutes. Okay. So through an abdomen. Okay. So it's not really based on the tissue density or thickness, the, the time length. Um, when you look at a graph, and I wish I had a graph I could show you, yeah. but mm -hmm. um, the tissue starts at a baseline. Mm -hmm. And as you apply the laser, it begins to climb, 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 climb. And somewhere between, depending on the tissue and the person, somewhere between three and five minutes, you reach a peak. Okay. Comes off after that. And so one long 20 minute treatment is not as good as several short three to five minute treatments. Okay. And so because it's a cold laser and there's no tissue heat, there's not a max, maximum exposure. Um, it's one of the few devices you'll find on the market that has no listed side effects. Wow. Okay. So you can't do any damage with the laser short of, you know, someone holding it in their eye for two minutes or something of that nature that just, um, okay. but you, you can't do it, but there is a point in time where the tissue stops responding. Okay. And so you mm -hmm. get that peak and a little mm -hmm. leveling off, but if I turn the laser off and I wait for an hour, for example, mm -hmm. and I stimulate that same tissue again, I get another peak that's higher. Okay. Another peak that's higher. Okay. And so we in our clinic we use lasers sometimes that we rent to patients, okay. where they can do eight or ten treatments a day instead of just you know relying on yeah. being in the clinic and doing it. So right. So when you're using this and you're doing these short treatments, what exactly as what is happening to the tissue when you're stimulating it? Are you creating 
a inflammatory healing response or what's happening in the actual tissue? When you get into the deep laser theory, okay? Yeah. So we're talking at the cellular level. Mm -hmm. So on the outside of every cell, there's receptor sites for things to enter the cell. Mm -hmm. Most of those sites are shared with different substances, okay? Right. On every cell of your body, body, there is a receptor site for light to enter the cell. Which okay. is kind of interesting because not all cells are exposed to light. Right, right. But they all have the ability to receive light. Um, and it's a shared site as well. But as the laser gets in at the cellular level, um, it begins to affect the mitochondria in the cell. Okay. okay? So... In the nucleus of the cell, you have nuclear DNA. Mm -hmm. It's hard to corrupt, okay? It's pretty hard set. But in each mitochondria, you have another copy of mitochondrial DNA. Uh, yeah. It's about 100 times more susceptible to be corrupted than the nuclear DNA. Got it. And so as the mitochondrial DNA gets corrupted, it begins to put off abnormal ATP or abnormal energy to the body. If I can introduce that light at the cellular level and get that mitochondria to resonate like it used to, it begins to put off normal ATP again. Got so I get it. the cells to regulate body function by the type of ATP that's being put out. If that makes sense. I don't want to be too- it does. Yes, no, that does make sense. So the mitochondria is often called the powerhouse of the cell. It makes ATP energy. So something in our lifestyle, in our life, disrupts that process. And so we're using the laser to almost like shock it a little bit and say, hey, go back to the way you're supposed right. to behave. And, and it, you know, again, based on the frequency, I can increase circulation to an area. Okay. I can just increase the function of that organ, okay. um, adrenals, thyroid, that kind of stuff by stimulating it and just getting it to resonate like it did when it was new again. Excellent. And so that's the theory behind it. Uh -huh. So as I treat, I'm kind of forcing the body to talk to itself function-wise. Got it. Okay. And so I'm going to give you a kind of an example. Of yeah, that'd be great. Let's say a person comes to me and they say, you know, I've got adrenal fatigue. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I know that the frequency for adrenal fatigue is 21. Mm -hmm. That's your adrenal resonance. Okay. But I also know that the frequency for your pituitary that controls the adrenal is 123. Okay. And so the lasers that I use have the ability to input four different frequencies. Oh, nice. So I'll put a uh, pituitary frequency on there, maybe hypothalamus, okay. probably thyroid, and then adrenal. Okay. And then if I begin to shine that laser over the adrenal glands, immediately the pituitary recognizes that and says, so why are you shining my frequency down there? And so I'm forcing the adrenal, the pituitary to talk again. And to communicate back and forth. And so you're up regulating the whole endocrine system at once instead of just because a lot of times people say I'm diagnosed with adrenal fatigue when in reality it might be a pituitary problem. So you're not actually putting the laser on the pituitary at the pituitary resonance, you're putting it at the adrenals to create this the the correct cycling of the hormones and the in that scenario, movement. yeah. And then I may okay. move it up on top of the head over the pituitary to force the adrenal to, to communicate. Okay. okay. Um, and so then when you're doing that and you're causing these these kind of interactions and communications, are you doing only one laser in one spot at the same time, or are you doing multiple lasers at the same time? So like I said, the lasers we use have two diodes in okay. them, and each diode can carry two frequencies at a time. Okay. And so there's four frequencies in there. Okay. Um, the lasers we use have a, um, a cross hatch pattern. So you get the same intensity of laser the entire length of that line. 
And so it's not a specific spot that you have to touch like an acupuncture point and be real yeah. specific. But you can paint a whole muscle group or a whole area okay. with that laser and get the same intensity. Okay. So when they're when you're doing it, you know those little lasers, uh, LED lasers that you play with and you know yeah. have your dogs chase. So it's not like one little spot like that, or is it and you're sweeping up and down an area? No, it's more of a, a line. It's a okay. long line or okay. a patch mm -hmm. that do that so you can paint a whole area quickly because okay. you get the same intensity the entire length of that line. Got it. So in this example that you're giving with the adrenal and the pituitary gland, so you would aim kind of at the adrenals in the trunk and you're kind of painting up and down. And then if you want to increase the communication from the adrenals to the pituitary, then you're aiming at the, at the head. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Perfect. And then if you want to include the, the thyroid gland in on that, then you would look at, you know, doing it at the throat. Well, like I say, it's, driving the whole function just because the frequencies okay. are in there okay. so it helps to shine right at an area but you don't have to Got it. Um, probably a little more explanation about how the laser affects the body mm -hmm. universally okay yeah sure um uh, it was an animal study so sorry if you like rats <laughs> <laughs> We'll put it aside for right now. <laughs> but there was a, a burn study that they did out of UC Davis mm -hmm. where they took rats and they burned their arms, okay? Okay. Or legs. Okay. And they had a control that they did nothing with. And then mm -hmm. they had the laser for the purposes of yeah. the one rat. So mm -hmm. they burned both legs on the rat okay. and they lasered one of them, okay? Okay it healed four times faster than the control. Wow. Okay, so you, you generate four times the tissue replication and response. So four times faster than the control. The opposite arm that they burned on the mm -hmm. rat that they never put the laser directly on yeah. killed twice as fast as the control. Wow. So there's a universal effect. Once you start shining the laser on the body, the body starts to absorb this light and it uses it universally throughout the body. Um, and okay. so that was just one study they did to say, wait, we're affecting everything when we shine this laser, so. That's interesting. Okay, so, and I wanna to come to this story, but I have more questions about all the things that it can do. So the friend who introduced us went, had an experience of shingles and she had told me that she was coming to you to get this laser treatment. So I'm curious, what were you, was this the same process then? It was stimulating the healing of shingles because normally shingles take the, quite a while to heal and to, for your body to recover from, especially with the pain. And I literally saw her get better within a few hours and she was back to her, her life the next day, which was quite shocking because that's not the usual response for shingles. Right. So the same thought process is there. Mm -hmm. um, again, using frequency okay. to introduce this laser, this 635 bandwidth, mm -hmm. um, using a frequency. Shingles is a virus, okay? Mm -hmm. Herpes simplex virus. Mm -hmm. This is very opportunistic waits for the body to get run down and worn out and then it then it shows up um they develop um what they call inverted frequencies okay so creating an environment exactly 180 degree opposite of a healthy virus is okay. an inverted frequency okay and so specifically with shingles in that patient i use a nerve root frequency okay to affect the nerve root mm -hmm. and that's where the shingles follow that nerve root i use two inverted viral frequencies okay so 521 574 creating an environment shingles can't exist in anymore and then i used an oxygen frequency because viruses don't do well in an oxygen rich environment <laughs> And so okay. I just created a, an environment right at the nerve root where that virus could not exist anymore. 
Gotcha. That's why I was curious. Response. Okay. That's fascinating. So because the virus was at the nerve root, you just basically gassed it out. Not 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 with gas, but like you basically created this area where it just couldn't survive. Right. And so then it that basically killed the virus's effect that usually goes down the nerve root. Right. And that's how she got released so quickly. To also go out on the nerve root where the actual stores are at now. Okay. okay? And I use an antiviral liquid that I use. Okay. Okay. That's got antiviral properties to it. I put it directly on the, the lesions. Okay. Laser through that or right over that site. Okay. Um, again, I'm going to use a big word here. Sure. <laughs> called photophoresis. Okay. Mm -hmm. So as the wavelength passes through what I put on the skin surface, it picks up the frequency of it and it delivers it into the tissue by photophoresing it in. Just like, you know, with ultrasound, you, <laughs> mm -hmm. you forese material into the, to the tissue. I can do that with a laser. And so I okay. delivered that antiviral into the body okay. directly into the tissue to kill okay. the virus at the skin site. Okay. So you're basically drawing it into the body. So it's more effective quicker. Yeah. And so all the whole treatment takes six minutes. Wow. I mean, not a long drawn out, you know, you got to lay here for two hours. Yeah. It's a five yeah. minute treatment at the nerve root or four minute treatment, another three or four minutes out on the, the actual lesions. Okay. That's incredible. And now you did it at just one level or do you go multiple levels and nerve roots just to make sure you're touching some areas? Correct. Shingles 99% of the time is unilateral yeah. <laughs> and at one nerve root. Sometimes you get multiple nerve roots. And so I use the, but again, going back to that universal effect, that's I'm right. hitting the nerve root, but it's going to climb up and down and affect any virus that's spreading up and down. Okay. below that nerve root or above that nerve root so wow that's incredible I now face it nerve root by nerve okay root. okay that's good and you just when you're finding it you try to find the the nerve root that seems to be most problematic just by normal normal knowledge of nerves yeah just following following yeah. that nerve root back to yeah. the spine yeah that's incredible do you often see people for shingles and give is this a common use of this treatment or is it not as well known? I would say it's probably not a common use for mm -hmm. the average practitioner who uses yeah. laser. Yeah. They use it more neurologically, but it's okay. something because I was involved in the research so early on yeah. and doing that, I probably think through the process differently than most, but right. we've designed the lasers based on that thought process. And so for example, the handheld laser that we sell patients. Mm -hmm. um, the lasers we use in the clinic, they have a keypad on them and I have to know all these numbers to put in <laughs> to affect the nerve root. Got um, it. When we did the handheld lasers, he said, the guy that designed it, he said, write me a hundred protocols okay. of the most common things you see in your practice. And then he pre-programmed all those frequencies in those hundred protocols. Makes sense. So, there's a shingles protocol. Okay. Turn it to that and then you hold it on the nerve root. Wow. <laughs> and so, yeah, I, I treat it often in my clinic because mm -hmm. we, yeah. um, again, a bit about my clinic. Um, I've been in practice, like I said, 37 years. I proved to myself very early in my career that I had no idea how to advertise. <laughs> <laughs> I wasted a lot of money on newspapers and yellow pages and, and but you know for the last almost 30 years it's been a hundred percent referral practice yeah. um yeah. just from patients and so I treat more and more shingles because we get mm -hmm. fast results yeah and so next time they hear of a friend uh, I went to him <laughs> <laughs> well so, I'm hoping yeah so those kind of things they increase and grow and grow and grow and then it depends on the actual situation and how we can apply the laser. 
there's not many tissues in the body that we don't have some knowledge of the frequency of that tissue. Okay. And so we can affect most things with the laser um, just by applying it using just some real basic logic and say, you know, what tissue is being affected and how can I affect that tissue positively with the laser. And so when you're talking about the frequencies and you had mentioned Dr. Reif, is, is it still all based on his research in the 1940s that, or is there still research going on to dive into more complex tissues and frequencies? Yes, there is still research going on. Um, there's a lot of frequencies that come out of Europe, out of mm -hmm. Germany specifically that we use. Um, but a lot of it's based on that. And I'll tell you a little side story that was kind of interesting to me. Sure. So my daughter, oldest daughter, played collegiate volleyball. Okay. Um, she came home from practice one day and she said, Dad, I can't see out of my eye. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> she said, I can't. Literally, I'm blind in one eye. And I said, you get hit with a ball? She said, no. I'm driving home. And I lost vision in that eye. I pulled off side of the freeway. Decided it wasn't going to get much better. And so I had a laser at home with me. I know the eye frequency is 81. I know um, oxygen is 120. Anyway, I began to apply these frequencies right behind her eye. And okay. right up on the big nerve. And within about three minutes, her vision came back in her eye. And I'm like, that's cool. That is cool. There's an eye surgeon that lives in my neighborhood. <laughs> so I'm like, we're still going over here. Mm -hmm. And he looked at her and examined it quite a bit. And he said, I think she probably had an ophthalmic migraine. Okay. He said, but there's no treatment for those. And I said, well, this is what I did. <laughs> and her vision came back. And he said, that's really interesting. So anyway, flash forward about three weeks. Um, I'm giving a lecture for the laser company and I told that story. And a guy pulled me aside at the next break and he said, how do you know that frequency is 81? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Dr. Wright mm -hmm. said it was 81, mm -hmm. 50s. And some research since then has confirmed that it's 81. Okay. And he said, Anyway, he kind of him hot around for a minute. And he said, I'm an eye researcher. That's what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. That's a very narrow <laughs> profession. There's not right. a lot of it. Right. And the eye is in constant motion. Mm -hmm. The microscopic motion, but it's always there. If that motion stops, that's when you have blindness. So the eye has to wiggle mm -hmm. to have function. Okay. Okay. And he said that cycle is 81 cycles per second per second. And nobody outside my field knows that number. How do you know that number? <laughs> and so again, it was a real current research that confirmed to me that those numbers are correct. And he said, all you did was you took an eye with the ophthalmic migraine, that, that wiggle has stopped because of circulation. All you did is make it wiggle again. And that's why vision came back so quickly. And so he explained it to me in more scientific terms than I, I just applied a simple laser. I know a number, I'm going to affect that tissue. Yeah. Anyway, kind of anecdotal story, but. Oh, a... That's so neat. So can you do that with other eye conditions as well that are considered kind of more permanent, like retinal blindness and that have you. Operation. Yes. You've All tried it. So you can affect the eye tissue. Um, um, I had a patient that was going blind due to scar tissue mm -hmm. in the eyes. Yeah. Um, and they had photographs that they had taken at the eye doctor of, of, mm -hmm. of the eye. And you can see the scar tissue. And so I just began applying, again, not in the eye, right. but to the eye tissue, you know, holding on the temple. Sometimes we'll laser directly through my hand into their eye. So my hand absorbs the photon energy, but okay. the laser energy gets in. And I just use the eye frequency and scar tissue frequencies. And over the period of about six weeks, seeing the patient twice a week, we reduce the scar tissue by 63%. Wow. 
based on the picture that the eye doctor was taking. Wow. So the eye doctor's on the phone with me saying, what are you doing? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he said, because this scar tissue progresses, it doesn't regress. Yeah. And so we had some interesting interactions with that particular eye surgeon as well. So That's incredible. Okay, so you've described kind of a hormonal situation, a viral situation, an eye migraine situation. Now, what if someone has, let's say, back pain? And you're looking at resolving that because you've talked about kind of using different types of frequencies, whether it's scar tissue or oxygen plus the eye. So if, if it's a musculoskeletal pain, you know, what does that look like for the different frequencies and what you're considering? So understanding pain a bit. Okay. So yeah. most of it is nerve generated. Mm -hmm. So it's pressure, especially with back pain. And so, again, we use nerve frequencies, but mm -hmm. obviously use a, a frequency that helps decrease inflammation quickly. Okay. To get the inflammation away from the nerve root. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of pain, even though it's perceived at the nerve root level, mm -hmm. starts up in the brain stem. Okay. And so, again, the ability to add four frequencies at a time. So I use mm -hmm. inflammation, nerve, brain stem. Okay. All at the same time. So I'm stimulating all the tissue to decrease pain. Okay. The other way that we apply the laser a lot when it comes to back pain and those kind of things, mm -hmm. as, as used, for example, like a herniated disc or something in your low back mm -hmm. where there's a lot of inflammation, the body as a protective thing will begin to shut down the muscles associated with that nerve root. Mm -hmm. And so you'll start to get leg pain or leg weakness with your right. low back, okay? And so what we do with the laser um, is what we call resetting the myotome, okay? Okay. And then what that entails is the myotome is a particular muscle pattern that follows a nerve root. So the muscles that are affected by that nerve. And they'll become weak kind of as a protective thing. The body says, I don't want you to use that muscle right now because it's going to hurt. Mm -hmm. when the muscle turns off and you try to engage it and use it, it hurts. Yes. Okay. That's the body saying, don't use that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unfortunately, when the body is in that mode, it stops healing as well. Mm -hmm. you slow down the healing process because those muscles aren't getting communication. And so what we can do is put the muscle on display by testing it manually. Okay. okay? So we check the strength of, you know, in the case of your leg, let's say sciatic pain, mm -hmm. um, the hamstring. Mm -hmm. There's a weakness there. Then I put the laser on the nerve root for about 60 seconds okay. and I recheck it. And the strength comes back very quickly into that muscle. So oh. now I've reestablished communication. So now when the patient walks and they engage the hamstring, they eliminate that part of the pain. And so I'm able to get the people back to function very quickly. Um, athletes, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, we had the opportunity to work um, with the Rattlers, the arena football team for five yeah. years. That's nice. and for the game, we would check the quarterback's shoulder, make sure mm -hmm. all the muscles were firing, and the running backs would do their legs. Okay. Just to make sure everything was 100% in firing um, to get better function quickly for the athletes what we noticed um, treating those players over a five-year period and other doctors have treated professional sports teams as well using these lasers and what they document is a decrease in the amount of injuries over okay. time because the muscles are firing the way they're supposed to so you yeah. have a less tendency to roll an ankle less tendency to tear a hamstring because the muscle is actually functioning and you're not overcompensating or overexerting a different muscle group trying to make up for the one that's not working so anyway yeah. oh that's great when you do something like in the example of feeling the hamstring again the muscle on the back of the thigh and you're retesting are you also encouraging the people to sense that happening as well so that they oh. keep that connection uh, that you yeah. just got back for them <laughs> 
I mean, the change is obvious, obvious. Yeah. <clears throat> I, I told you I was involved in the original research. They did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what we used back then was Cybex equipment. Okay. That actually measures strength of contraction. Mm -hmm. And you can't malinger when you're on a Cybex machine because it, it flags you. Okay. <laughs> you can't. Play. And so we would measure strength of contraction, laser mm -hmm. for 60 seconds, and measure, measure strength of contraction again. And overall, it was an 84% increase after 60 seconds. That's how they got their FDA approval. <laughs> so to the person on the table, it's an obvious change, strength-wise. And then I'd point out to them, if it turns back off, you'll know immediately because you're going to start to get that pain again. Your leg is going to feel like it's going to buckle. And some people, we need to reset it a few times. Mm -hmm. Some people, I reset it once, and they're good to go. Okay. Um, it just depends on the individual and the health of that individual. And whether the cell can upregulate and stay upregulated based on nutrition, based on a lot of different things. Okay. So the amount of treatments a person needs and how long the treatments, well, the amount of treatments over the period of time really depends on their body's health prior, beforehand and during and afterwards. Correct. So. Correct. Okay. Um, I talked earlier, I think it's mm -hmm. worth mentioning about the yeah. receptor sites for light mm -hmm. to the cell. Right. It's, a, it's a shared site. Um, okay. One of the things, substances that share that site are all the NSAIDs. Oh. Uh, they're all in. So if I get a patient that comes in and they've been taking a ton of ibuprofen for the pain, the laser is less effective because they've tied up all those receptor sites. Okay. I need to get them off that anti-inflammatory and more reliant on so I can get enough light energy into that cell. Um, the lasers we use are pretty low power. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, I used to describe it, the laser companies kind of got in the Tim Taylor <laughs> mode of, more wattage is better. The bigger the wattage, the better the laser. And, and there's a law in, in physics that's called Arch-Schultz law, okay? okay? And what that law basically states that if you introduce a frequency to the body at a low voltage, mm -hmm. the body is more accept accepting of that frequency, okay? So it's kind of like me standing in front of you and thumping you on the chest and giving you my opinion and me standing back and telling you about my opinion, okay? And the, the cell wall is the same way. So if I try to pound a big high power laser into the cell wall, the cell wall becomes resistant to that frequency. Where I'm using, um, instead of a one watt laser, I'm using a 7.5 milliwatt laser. Okay. Okay, and that's why smaller cells so quickly and so easily and just following basic laws in physics to do that. Okay. That's, that's incredible. And you had also touched on that there's no real side effects. So any contraindications, can anyone really receive this type of treatment? I mean, standard, standard warnings come with the mm -hmm. laser. Okay. Uh, just because this, they have not been studied completely. Okay. So they, if you're pregnant, mm -hmm. uh, talk to your doctor about it. Okay. Have I lasered pregnant women? Yes, constantly. Mm -hmm. Is there any side effect? No. Okay. Um, I worked real close with a cardiology group for a long time. And they would send patients over for laser all the time after open heart surgery to help mm -hmm. with scar tissue. And one of the questions was, it, will it affect the pacemaker? Got it. And so we actually took lasers out to their cath lab, mm -hmm. <laughs> have the patient monitored with their pacemaker mm -hmm. and then lasered right over the pacemaker on purpose just to watch the changes. Then there were none. Oh, and so great. it didn't affect the way the pacemaker worked. Um, it doesn't, because it's a cold laser, it mm -hmm. doesn't heat the metal device of the pacemaker or the rods in your back or the screws in your knee or yeah. any of those things. So there's no side effects okay. there. Okay. 
um, with you know heating up tissue like you would with ultrasound or something. Right. And able to use the laser in a lot of situations where you can't use other standard medical stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see this also working on people who maybe their memory isn't quite there because there's dementia is also usually a warning and a stop sign for a lot of conditions, but something like this, I could see how you could still give relief. There's a caregiver with the person and it can provide help. And as long as the person can sit still for five minutes. You're correct. Yeah. And, and is it a cure-all for that? It's not. Right. <laughs> There's a lot of nutrition mm -hmm. that needs to happen. A lot of other yeah. things need to happen. Right. But that in conjunction with the laser, again, speed the process up dramatically. Wow. Wonderful. Recover nerve tissue. Okay. So conditions, so viruses, pain, um, athletic ability. Is there any other conditions that you want to share with us that it could be helpful for? I mean, we do a lot of hormonal stuff. Okay. Obviously, um, just because we can stimulate the system to work better. Mm -hmm. um, use the laser mainly neurologically. Okay. So, for example, um, had a gentleman in the office just um, last week um, who suffered several strokes. Um, in a short period of time, mm -hmm. um, he is starting to recover from that. He lost his left side function, um, and in a matter of twenty minutes in the office, I was able to sy systematically go through his left shoulder and his mm -hmm. left leg and turn all those myotomes back on wow. and get to where he could lift his toes again and he could oh. move. Again. And you know, he went home and. It lasted for about six or eight hours and then it started to go away again. Came mm -hmm. back the next day, we relasered, then it lasted until the next day. Oh, nice. And, and so we get expanded and we're getting really quick strength increases. So it will help recover nerve tissue just as well. Broken bones heal at four times the rate. Okay. So my wife fell oh, two years ago and broke her wrist. Mm -hmm. Um, went in, um, it was displaced pretty badly. <laughs> they said, we got to calm the swelling down, probably going to need surgery, um, yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. Um, went home, got a laser going on it. Um, after the first five days, went back to the surgeon. He said, I don't think I need to do surgery on it, but it's going to be unstable for a while. Went back at two weeks. He x-rayed. Mm -hmm. There's a complete bone callus on this break already. Wow. Take the cast, you know, and get her moving her fingers again. And so wow. no surgery and a complete bone callus on x-ray at two weeks instead of eight weeks. And so again, four times the rate, four times. And, and so, and again, that's all been backed up by university studies that it heals at four times the rate. That's so That's wonderful. So I... As we wrap up here, how can people reach you to come see you? Um, my clinic is in Mesa, um, Arizona. Um, I'll give you a phone number. Sure. 80-807-1324. Okay. Or they can reach me directly. Um, at email is probably the best way. Okay. Um, it's D, like David, W. Shiflet, S H I F L E T, mm -hmm. at msn.com. Okay. Um, we do have people come in from all over the country. Okay. Um, and we'll spend four or five days just to, to get us to apply lasers. I try to find a laser in their area, and if I can't, they'll come. <clears throat> I also do some real unique um, scanning in my office. I have some whole body scanners okay. that I went to Norway to train on. Nice. Uh, that's what kind of got me into these scanners was laser stuff. And so I've been able to scan, for example, I can scan your thyroid. I can laser your thyroid and then I can scan it again an hour later and show that I changed function of the thyroid. Got it. And, and so I have people come in from all over the country because those scanners are very unique. 
but they come in to get scanned and then we design a nutritional laser protocol for them to follow. And they either can you know, stay in town for five days, they can buy a laser and buy nutrition, they can do whatever and then go back and, and treat whatever they've got. But it, it's a clinic where we've kind of integrated all of these different forms of energy medicine and laser is kind of the thing that we can hang our hat on to this well research, so. And just like you were doing muscle testing for the muscles, the scanner helps us check the organ function so you can see the impact. And then you make lifestyle recommendations to support the continued functioning of that organ. Is that right? Exactly. exactly. Okay. That's great. So, okay. So lasers, the scanning, nutritional, chiropractic, is there anything else that you do that we left off? <laughs> I think that's about it. <laughs> okay, that's enough? Okay. <laughs> we'll have to and, check back in a year, and I'm sure there might be something else added to that list. That's, an, that's a really incredible. I've got some people who work with me here with the scanner that do emotional release stuff as well and all kinds of stuff. So because that all gets involved. When there's a trauma like a stroke or a broken bone, there's an emotion component. So we try to address the whole body at once. That's great. And that's people, wonderful. That's you treat strokes. I don't. I, I treat patients that have had strokes because we treat the whole body and the patient. That's yeah. kind of our philosophy. That's great. So. That's great because it's it's all connected anyways, and yep. you can't just leave one part of it out of the equation. So nope. yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you for breaking down the lasers, explaining it to us so we can understand how it works in the body and why it's so effective. Sometimes knowing a little bit of that background makes it more believable because I've seen what you've done and I love sharing people who are doing great work like this. So I really appreciate your time today. I hope I did it in an understandable way. So You really did. And thanks for sharing your email and your phone number so that way people can reach out to you as well and get some help. And um, I do know some people in Mesa that I will definitely be sending your way. So I thank you for your time. Again, Amy, it's been my pleasure. So <laughs> Wonderful. And thank you all for joining us today. Please go check out Dr. Shiflet's, um practice. Give him a call. Send him an email. He's doing great work out there. And I know he can help quite a few of you listening to us today. So thank you again. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you next week. Bye now.